Hello friends, we are starting a new series of videos on computer organization and architecture, in short COA. Now why this subject is so important for your BTEC career, why this subject is so important for your GATE exam or for any other competitive exams which you are going to face in future, you already know all those things. So without wasting your time, I'll directly start the session. So only one request to you, if you like the videos, please do subscribe to my channel. Please share these videos if you feel like this is helpful for all the students and also if you have any suggestion please put your suggestion on the comment section so i'm starting the very first class of coa today because all these things which we'll discuss in today's class most of the things at least most of the things you already know so i'll try to finish this class as quickly as possible so the very first question people ask whenever it comes to COA is what do you mean by COA or what is COA? So as a computer science student, you should be able to answer this question. So COA, if you see the term COA, the full form of COA is computer organization and architecture. There are two important terms you can notice. One is organization and one is architecture. Now, I believe you already know the difference between organization and architecture. If not, then let me take a very simple example. Suppose I asked you to construct a building, a building of three floors maybe. So this is the task I have given to you. Now, whenever I have given this task to you, I believe you won't jump for the construction immediately, right? What you will do is, what professional people do is, before they really construct the building, they design one architecture, one blueprint. That blueprint will tell you how to construct this building effectively means there will be how many doors there will be how many windows etc etc how to construct these things so you will have a detailed blueprint with you once the blueprint is ready you can follow the blueprint and end of the day or end of the year you will have the building with you so that blueprint is nothing but your architecture fine now what is organization then once the blueprint is ready with you what is the next task you will do you will try to figure out what are the things you need to buy to construct the building, right? So the basic things may be bricks, woods, cements, etc, etc, you have to buy, right? So now once you buy all those things, small, small components, what next? You have to organize those bricks, cements or stones, whatever you bought. You have to organize in a systematic way so that end of the day or end of the year you have the building with you, right? So that is nothing but organization when you know the blueprint you know the components what are the components you need to use next you have to arrange those components in an effective way so that you can read you can you can construct the building so that is organization so i believe it's clear for you what is organization and what is architecture now in computer organization and architecture basically what we will do is first we will see the architecture how to design an effective computer it may be for any application we will see in the future classes next once we have the architecture, we'll try to figure out what are the small, small components we need to organize to get the effective architecture, computer architecture, fine? So I believe this is clear to you. So next people ask a very simple question. What are the types of computers, you know? Now, if you go through different materials, PPTs or articles, you'll get various types of computers they have explained. So it's fine. Everyone explained different types of computers. So very basic five types of computers I personally try to explain are number one embedded system. Now what do you mean by embedded system or embedded computers? Embedded computers are nothing but a large computer which is specifically designed to operate some specific task basically used for some uh, large corporation organization or some scientific purpose. The size of this computer will be very large and the purpose is specific only some specific tasks it will do fine in the future classes obviously you will come to know all these things in detail next is personal computer now what is personal computer we already know means the computer system which we use for personal uses like our laptops tablets mobile phones all comes under personal computer we know that next is service computer what is service service and enterprise system so service and enterprise system is again a large computer which is used for any particular enterprise or organization to do some set of specific tasks. Now not a single purpose, 
will use the system for a set of specific tasks for an organization or for some research purpose. Next is supercomputer. Now, supercomputer we already know this is the fastest computer we can have. It is it has the capability to calculate large mathematical things in in a second or less than that, right? So supercomputer we know and the basic uh, properties and the uses of supercomputer we already know. So I don't want to waste this time, waste your time on this. Next is uh, grid computer. So grid com computer is nothing but a collection of several computers means. Suppose I want to perform some specific task, but I don't have that powerful processor with me. So what alternately we can do is, I can organize all the small small computers or processor together in such a way that all the processors are working to perform a specific application or task. So this is nothing but grid computer, collection of small small computer when all the processors are dedicatedly used to perform some specific task. Next, cloud computing or cloud computers, we already day by day, every day we use cloud computing, right? Cloud computing means which does not exist in our physical system, but still we have the right to access the things, right? It's stored somewhere else, but from anywhere we can access that, right? Like our Google Drive, our so many, uh, Amazon, Amazon is there. So we already know cloud computing, right? So I don't want to waste your time on this. So next very basic question people ask is what are the functional units of computer? If anyone asks you what are the functional units of computer, you can easily say, right? Those are input devices, output devices, memory, ALU, arithmetic and logical units, and CU, which is control unit. So these are the five functional units we already know from class 10 itself, we are getting all these things. So I don't want to discuss all these things. In future classes, we will discuss all these things in detail. Next is what do you mean by program and what do you mean by data? So again, this is known to us. What is a program? Program is nothing but a set of instructions which is dedicatedly used to perform some specific task. Now what is instruction? What is the task? What are the tasks it can do? All the things we will see in our future classes. So next, what is data? So the very basic definition of data can be data are the numbers and characters that are used as operands by the instruction. Fine. So what is an instruction? We'll see in detail in the upcoming classes. So as, as this is the first class, don't think much. Next, a simple question people ask, the types of computer architecture. What are the types of computer architecture you know? So there are two major types of architecture we should know. Number one is von Neumann architecture and number two is Herbert architecture. Now both these architectures have uh, have their own advantages and disadvantages and both are still using it's not that someone is some, some architecture is outdated no both the architectures are being used in present day also it depends on the application system which architecture you will use fine so next we'll see a little uh, little detail about all, all these two architectures first one is von neumann architecture if you see von neumann architecture the architecture is very simple we have control unit arithmetic and logical unit these two together known as cpu and then we have memory unit this side i have input device or input unit this side i have output device or output unit now this architecture is developed long way long back between 1945 to 51 by a scientist called john von neumann fine so if you notice this architecture there are several points you should notice very carefully first thing is if you see the connection here, the connection is, the communication is in half duplex. I believe you know what is duplex, half, uh, duplex, simplex, right? Duplex means two-way communication. Half duplex means it's a two-way communication, but both cannot communicate together. It's like a walkie-talkie. If I talk in walkie-talkie, then once I finish talking, then only I can get the answer from the other side, right? So that is an example of half duplex. So here, in von Neumann architecture, they say that the communication should be in half duplex, not full duplex. And second important, if you see, we have a single memory unit. The single memory unit is responsible to hold, hold both programs and data. Fine. This is the architecture of von Neumann. Now, if I ask you advantages and disadvantages, advantage is very effective, very easy to design, right? We have very, uh, yeah, very easy architecture to design. If I ask you about disadvantage, the first disadvantage you can say is half duplex. 
so both your communication is not possible so one need to wait uh, i don't know how much time i'll get to get the answer from b say i am communicating from a to b so th this is a, uh, although this is a duplex communication but half duplex when i am talking to you you cannot talk to me at the same time so it's a problem so next in 1947 a group of scientists from harvard university designed one more ar architecture which is known as harvard architecture so some modifications are done from the previous architecture if you see this architecture we have alo this side input output this side instruction memory data memory so if you notice carefully this architecture all the connections we have are in full duplex means both way communication is possible at the same time so this is an advantage of the previous architecture next if you see memory unit also we have divided here in two parts one is instruction memory and another one is data memory now that means in your instruction or in your program whatever instructions you have you have to store in instruction memory and whatever data you have in the program you have to store in data memory so you have two different places now if i ask you about the advantages so first advantage you can say it's a duplex full duplex communication so no need to wait for the response from other side at the same time we can communicate and also the advantage is we have two memory uh, partition so whenever i i want to store something in instruction i will put here if i want to put something in data i will put here this is an advantage because there will be less data or instruction messes right if i need data i know where to go if i know if i need instruction i know where i have to go right but there is a disadvantage also what is the disadvantage the first disadvantage is see suppose i i am performing some operation some application i want to run the application consists of say uh, 10 gb so 10 gb application i want to run so out of 10 gb suppose i need 3 gb instruction and 7 gb data fine this is an application i want to run where 3 gb instruction are there and 7 gb data are there now i want to use harvard architecture now harvard in harvard architecture whatever memory we had physical memory we had so before we run any program we already split it this memory into two parts right one is for instruction and one is for data suppose we have divide, we have say 10 gb of 10 gb of memory and out of 10 gb i have divided 5 gb for i have reserved 5 gb for instruction and 5 gb for data this is the memory architecture i have i have equally divided into two parts now see this application when i want to run 10 gb of uh, program where i need 3 gb for instruction and 7 gb for data now tell me whether this memory or this architecture can hold this program or not there will be difficulties right why because i have already divided my memory into two parts 5 gb and 5 gb but in data i need 7 gb to to execute this specific program i don't have 7 gb here in data pro instruction is fine i have 5 gb space and i need 3 gb to store so i can easily do it but what about data 7 gb data i cannot store here in 5 gb storage although in total i have 10 gb right in total i have 10 gb the program size is also 10 gb still i am unable to run this program because of this partition right so there are some advantages and disadvantages in both the architectures so that's it about all this basic questions or basic concept of col so in the next class we'll try to discuss some other topics so that's all for today thank you everyone for watching my video